How to break an emotional addiction. Hi, my name is Dr. Meghna Dikshit. I'm the author of the book You Matter and Brain and Performance Expert. You must be wondering what is emotional addiction and what exactly happens when you're addicted to the emotions. Well, I'm going to explain this topic in so much detail to you so that you will understand why sometimes you're feeling unnecessarily anxious or unnecessarily fearful, depressed or unnecessarily angry. But before that, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon and let's begin. So what is this emotional addiction? Emotional addiction is your body depending on your own chemical responses. What do I mean by that? See, on an average, a human being gets more than 70,000 thoughts every single day. And all of these thoughts, because we engage with them, we attach a meaning to them. Every thought that comes to us, we think it's true. And when we think it is true, we attach a certain meaning to that thought. The moment you attach a certain meaning to a thought, it becomes your reality in terms of your body changing at the cellular level. The moment you feel this thought is true, you're going to attach a meaning to that thought. The moment you attach the meaning, there is a feeling rushed in your body and that feeling is going to alter you at the cellular level. The moment there is a physiological change happens in your body, your body sends a signal to the brain and your brain releases neurotransmitter. Now what happens is every time there is this emotion comes up in your space and every time there's a cellular change on repetition you get the habit of releasing the neurotransmitters with a certain kind of a thought now most of our thoughts 95 percent of them are on habitual basis like the same thought that you got today yesterday day before you know even a week back month back or year back so you are 95 percent your thoughts are repeating on its own and because the 95 percent of thoughts are repeating same emotions are repeating in your body same emotions are creating the changes in your cellular level and the moment there's a change in your physiology it sends the signal to your brain and the brain releases neurotransmitter now this became a cycle because the thought is repeating on its own and the moment this becomes a cycle there is a circuitry created in your brain the neurons that are connected with these thoughts now fire and wire together creating neuro pathway in your brain and in your body and automatically there is a reward circuit that is set so now you understand that every time there is a negative thought comes to your mind your brain releases a neurotransmitter as a reward and this itself becomes an addiction now every time you need that reward or you need that particular neurotransmitter making you feel better you don't have to go and actually experience a negative experience or you don't have to go through a traumatic event but now you just have to bring in that negative thought in your mind and automatically this circuitry gets fired and immediately you start feeling good now you may be wondering this is very strange why would I like to feel the negative emotion when I'm constantly asking myself to not feel it? Well, that's the key here. Because that emotion immediately releases a positive reward mechanism, unknowingly you become addicted to it. Now, unfortunately, what happens is when people are addicted to substances, they are at least aware at a certain level that that substance is damaging them. But when we are emotionally addicted to a particular scenario or a particular emotion, we don't even know or we don't even understand it because it seems all so natural and there is nothing outside that you're addicted to to make you feel that you're dependent on something else. Your own body is a chemical factory that's releasing that chemical that is making you feel good. So it's very strange to even admit and a lot of times people do not admit that they're addicted to their emotions of sadness, depression, anxiety or anger. They simply say that I don't know why I feel this way. And every time I point out to people that maybe you need to go look into the uh, you know real matter what happened in the in the beginning when you started feeling this way and now why have you created this particular pattern? Is your body now addicted to that particular cue and reward mechanism 
that is making you generate the same negative emotion as a feel good emotion now get your pen and paper to write down what can you do if you are caught into this addiction or you are into this situation where the patterns are repeating in your life see most likely you will observe that there are certain patterns like being in a toxic relationship one after another attracting the bad boss or maybe uh, having a bad colleague around you in your environment repeating even if you change the environment maybe falling uh, constantly uh, you know sick or ill when there is an opportunity right in front of you or maybe when an opportunity comes and you take it up also after a while you self sabotage it have you noticed this patterns in your life repeating again and again and if you have done so then let's identify which is that emotion that particular emotion that's causing you to fall into this pattern again and again so what do you need to identify that particular emotion let's begin with that the first step to identify which emotion is causing all of these patterns in your life is to set an intention to be aware and to observe this emotion how do you do that set an intention as in you have to be aware and observant about every thought that is unacknowledged or that is on autopilot now it's practically impossible to do that right and let me tell you in the beginning itself this is not something that you can achieve overnight as i said there are more than 70000 thoughts in your life how can you scan each one of them there is so much other work that you need to do that it's practically impossible to just sit and do this right so what you need to do is you need to assign a particular time in a day maybe morning maybe afternoon maybe in the night whichever time that you want you can assign the time to observe your thoughts it's a practice that you need to develop so that every thought that's come to you you do not attach a meaning to it but you observe it when you start observing you will eventually recognize maybe after 3 days 7 days 10 days that what are some of the thoughts that are unnecessary thoughts what are some of the thoughts that causing disturbance in your body your body will eventually start telling you by pointing out some aches and pains or maybe some tingling maybe some weird sensations that are associated with this thought and once that happens you also can go deeper and see if there is some sort of an instagram post or maybe some religious post or maybe something political that triggers that reaction inside you slowly when you identify which is the emotion that comes to you again and again and again you can write that emotion down that's the first step now let me tell you this first step may take a little longer time so first step is observe type in the chat box observe and let me know that you are going to first start with the step of observation type observe the second step is to ask someone for the input someone whom you truly trust this person could be your family member your friend your well wisher whom you trust deeply and whom you know that this person has only good intentions and only going to give you the feedback it is in your favor now be ready to be called out be ready for this person to tell you that what is going wrong in your space and be open to work on that feedback step number 3 commit to daily 5 to 10 minutes of meditation it's totally up to you make it a 30 days habit of doing meditation on a particular time whichever time suits you preferably empty stomach and just 5 to 10 minutes now the form of meditation could be whichever you want whether it's silence whether it's observing your breath whether it's dynamic meditations like singing or dancing it's totally up to you you can choose whichever makes you feel good but you have to engage in that particular meditation completely you have to immerse into it and put everything aside at that moment commit to a 30 days of cycle of this what is going to happen in this is initially it may make you feel uncomfortable but eventually over a period of time this period of meditation will give you a lot of awareness of your repetitive thoughts and your emotions and because you are engaging into meditation now you will develop an ability to observe your thoughts and emotions and you can keep them at a distance 
So if you're going to commit to this step, type commit to 30 days, commit to 30 days in the chat box and let me know. Let's be accountable to each other, which is the meditation that you will be opting for. Silence, breathing, chanting or dance, whichever is the meditation that you feel 5 to 10 minutes every single day and preferably on the same time. Now, as you can tell, this is going to take a lot of time, a lot of energy, right? But let me tell you, every minute you spend on this process is going to be so worth it. But at the same time, when you're in this process, there's a possibility that, you know, the other emotions that surround this primary emotion will also come up. There could be anger, there could be guilt, there could be shame, because you're now going deeper and understanding what is stemming or what is coming from this particular experience or what has happened in your past. So every time you go there, there's a possibility that you will feel extremely negative. But the key here is to be in awareness and to know the big picture. And the big picture is what? The big picture is you're getting out of this addiction completely. Now, one more key factor I would like to share with you. Once you get into this awareness or once you get into these feelings that are, you know, coming up again and again and sometimes it make, will make you feel really weepy or make you feel like you're getting angry or upset again and again or you're getting triggered again and again. Being in awareness and being grateful for the awareness that you're getting is the key to this entire process. So you have to be really patient with yourself and maybe you can tell people around you whoever you love that you're doing this work on yourself and if there is a possibility that something is coming up and if you are reacting in a different way or if you're reacting in some dysfunctional way to be cooperative with you nothing to be scared of as you're going go, going to do this work slowly uh, it won't be giving you any kind of a big eruption and if a big eruption happens, you know that this is a time to seek some professional help, right? Now for you to go through these steps, I want to give you some support system here. What else can you do in your life that can start supporting your the addiction for your own emotions? The first thing, when I was studying Ayurveda, I realized that Ayurveda emphasizes a lot on your mind, on your thoughts because every you know, body problem comes from your mind. Everything is psychosomatic, right? But when it is psychosomatic, Ayurveda also says that while you're working on your mind, if you can start slowly working on your body, it's going to give you much better results. Now, the first thing that you can start working on your body to support this first three steps is planning a proper nutrition for yourself. Your food impacts your mental health. Your food impacts your moods. Your food impacts your emotions. Because at the end, the food also generate energy. And emotions are energy in motions. So focusing on your food during this process, more green uh, leafy vegetables, more fruits, uh, reducing the quantity of food, maybe eating before sunset, drinking enough water or liquids, or maybe seeking a professional dietitian's and nutritionist's help might help you to calm your body so that you don't react too much to this process. The second thing that I would like you to do is start getting yourself some physical activity that will eventually help building new neural circuits. There is a proven research that says that if you work out thrice or four times a week, even 20 minutes a day creates a huge impact on your brain health and it helps you to create new neurons, which is also called as neurogenesis. When there's a new neuron developed in your body, that really helps you to create better circuitries and break the old addictions. So while you're working on your mind, it's a great idea to start your workout as well. Go slow, steady and consistent. Now the last step into this entire journey is be aware of your resistance. A lot of times, actually not a lot of times, all the times, our body does not like to get out of the comfort zone. Our addictions do not allow us to get out of the comfort zone and that's one of the reasons we keep going back to the same emotions again and again. 
so whenever you are working on yourself be ready to face some resistance from your own self there's a part of you which really wants to get out of this addiction but there's a huge part of you which is comfortable in this addiction it's as good as quitting smoking or any substance you the moment your body feels that you're depriving of that emotion or you're putting it away it's going to bring in a resistance in your space in terms of some sort of a uh, you know a different addiction maybe binge eating maybe stress eating maybe not able to sleep or maybe re- being more reactive these are all ways or bringing up aches and pains in your body are all the ways that your body is asking you to go back to your old self this exactly happens in any other d addiction so be prepared for facing some resistance and be you know ready to to counter that resistance like if suppose you feel the resistance that you want to suddenly eat you know which is not a good food like fried foods or maybe you know eating some junk food maybe keeping them away is your good option or maybe keeping good fruits or maybe some you know nuts around you that can help you cope up with these things will help you so you have to identify the resistance your body will bring in and what can you then counter it with to support you at the end i want to tell you one big thing okay that whatever the emotion is and whatever your addiction to that emotion is it's definitely not worth keeping it within you because this is the same emotions that causing you to procrastinate attracting wrong relationships having money issues or career challenges you are very capable you are very skilled and even though you have that experience skill and capability if you are not able to reach the heights of success that you are looking for then this is something that you need to take responsibility of maybe so far you were not aware of what is happening and why this is coming to you maybe it's not really your fault but taking responsibility is your responsibility if you like the video give me a thumbs up do not forget to share it at least 10 people and i will see you again